and we're here with Dean Schneider, animal. How, how would you describe yourself? Animal act, rights activist? Um, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know if there's a description yet for me. Yeah. Animal behaviorist, lion yeah. boy. Lion boy, I, I like don't know. That. Yeah, yeah, but they call me any type of names. Let's let's get right into it. What, what can you describe to the audience what uh, what you do and what you're known for? Yeah, well, I think I'm known for in the public for all those videos with the lions and the wild animals in Africa. Yeah. Um, what I actually do is bringing animals into people's hearts. Mm -hmm. I do educational and inspirational content, which I spread all over the world to inspire and educate people about wildlife. Right. Because I believe that. You know, only what we love, that's what we protect, right? Right. And um, the step number one is to create that emotional attachment mm -hmm. to the animal world. Right. And then we can call for action and stuff like that. So, but first that bond needs to be created, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, I heard you talking about that in one of the videos and it really made sense to me. Yeah. Okay. Like if people feel close to the animals, then they'll worry more about protecting them. That's what it is. Yeah. Because yeah. it's kind of out of sight, out of mind right now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You sort of treat them as your pets. Or I guess they are your pets. So. Ah, they're not uh, really my pets, yeah, to be honest. Okay. It's like, you know, they are pretty wild, actually. Uh, yeah. They, they do hunt by themselves. They do feed off whole carcasses and mm -hmm. oh, yeah, they, I saw that they live in a very natural environment they live in the african wild mm -hmm. so i actually want to rather take them away from you know people thinking that they are pets because right. they supposed to live in the wild and they are not good pets even though there is lots of countries where the laws are so poor that you can keep a lion as a pet mm -hmm. or a monkey as a pet but they are definitely not good pets mm -hmm. so yeah. Uh, is it a compound that you own and are they free range or there is there go, like yeah. kind of a perimeter? Uh, well, there is a per perimeter fence. Um, it's 3.6 million square meters, so it's huge. Right. We have three mountains and rivers and natural dams and stuff like that. We have thousands of wild living animals on that property. And um, I did build, you know, I started off, I bought that property because I wanted to do something with animals. Mm -hmm. And it's in what country? South Africa, in the right. north of South Africa. And uh, and there I, yeah, I started off with the first lion rescue. And uh, after that, I built that pride of lions, of six lions. And uh, they live in a camp, which is 25,000 square meters. But the goal is now to contribute the entire property to them so that they can hunt by themselves and live a wild life, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but this takes a lot of paperwork as well. We need to renew the perimeter fence, and it's quite a lot of work, which we still, which still needs to be done before we can do that. But uh, yeah, that's what the current situation. I, I have a hyena there. I have monkeys. I've there. seen them all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I love cool. them. Yeah. I was actually wondering too, like, do you ever have to like because you're friends with the animals, mm -hmm. right? In in a, in a manner of speaking, and you're. Do you ever like worry that the lion is gonna take out like one of the antelopes that you're friends with? No, that's well, you know, I don't bond with the wild ones. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible because the the for example the wild antelopes they are just wild. You know, when they see you they run away. Or oh, okay. When it's mating season they want to fuck you up. <laughs> so right. yeah. you know, it's like that, that's proper. Have that's you been an charged by it? Yeah, yeah, of course. What do you do when an antelope charges you? Um. You run away. <laughs> <laughs> what did your cameraman it, it, do? It yeah, as well. You know, it depends on what kind of antelope. Uh, usually, they always run away from you because they don't know what you they're are. They're more afraid. And they're yeah. more afraid of you because naturally, antelopes, they are very low in the uh, food chain. Mm -hmm. So they have lots of reasons to run. They are usually made to run away instead of charging after. But right. if it's mating season, for example, or if you're in between the baby and its mother, then she doesn't give a fuck who you are. She'll just go after you. I know all about it. I've been to bars in Newport Beach when guys are horny. It's yeah, totally exactly. The same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what were the first steps you took in forming the Lion Pride? Um, well, uh, forming the specific Lion Pride or starting off with that mission? Um, I guess maybe right. start with the mission. Then. Start with the mission. And okay. I'm also, because you, you basically... Did you bring the lions in one by one? Yeah, yeah, plus, minus. Well, with the mission, it's actually a little bit of a longer story. I'll try to keep it short now. Um, I was always already super inspired by animals. It started at a very young age through Steve Irvin, mm -hmm. right? 
Mm-hmm. You guys know Steve Irvin. Oh, yeah. yeah Crocodile Hunt. Everybody knows him. Crikey. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was the one who brought wildlife into my living room. I grew yeah. up in Zurich. I'm originally from Switzerland, not right. from South Africa. And, um, and he was the one who opened these doors to the animal world for me and made it accessible mm-hmm. through the TV. Um, and uh, since every then, animals were my ultimate passion. But uh, of course, I grew up in Switzerland and I just followed that system. I didn't have wildlife right in front of my door, right? So I ended up in the finance branch. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was very lucky and blessed to be able to establish my own company in the age of 20. And over the next three years, now from 20 till 23, I was very successful. And um, that allowed me to be able to achieve goals, like general goals which young guys have, like having expensive watches, nice cars, and you know, a fancy lifestyle. You watch TV and you wanna be like these stars and celebrities and be able to afford those things. So you make it as a goal for yourself. And I reached those goals at a very young age already and realized then, man, this is not really what makes me truly happy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they think this will make them happy and it makes you happy for, certain period of time but after a few months that value that material value which you're actually looking for the emotional value not the material value but that drops it's not like with a dog or a friend you make friends with someone five years later you're better friends and the value increased yeah Uh, you buy a car today two months later the value dropped the material one as well as the emotional one Hmm. because you might first you know you're driving that ferrari you hear the sound you, you you know you smell the leather you everything yeah. is so new and you're excited yeah. after three months you don't even realize it anymore it's like you just go into the, that that's a vehicle which brings you from a to b but you don't appreciate it anymore like you did yeah. differently with a dog for example after 10 years you come back home in the first five minutes it's the biggest party because that dog is so happy to see you you feel that love you give that love back and that's what we humans are looking for that's why many humans have pets Mm. and especially dogs as pets Mm. because of that emotional exchange of energy right and uh this is what truly makes me happy so i told myself man i gotta change something in my life um i sold everything i sold my cars my watches my house my company and everything got that money together and this allowed me then to start off with my mission in south africa what's what's the main thing you think like if you could distill it down to one what's the main thing you think you've gained from friendship with animals everything man it just changed you completely Not completely like do you learn so much from animals like how to communicate with one another, not between animals and humans as well, between humans and humans. They learn you how to build friendships. They learn you how to be patient. They learn you how to just accept certain things and not wanting to change people. You know, everybody is the way he is. It's their nature. Yeah, and you shouldn't try to change, try to accept that person the way she is or he is. And uh, if you can't, then step away if you can't get along with one another. But the worst thing is to try to change somebody's nature. Mm-hmm. And this is like trying to have a lion as a pet. That, that won't work. On long term, it won't work because a lion is not meant to be a pet. Mm-hmm. Or, or if you put a bird into the ocean, he's not meant to be a fish. You got to accept him on his terms. Exactly. We got to accept these animals the way they are and not the way we wish them to be. And the same we should do with humans as well. And there's so many different levels and aspects where we can learn so much from animals. Communication, for example, like how often does it happen? Like we have wars and we we lose friendships and love because of miscommunication, because there is a misunderstanding. You put something into the room, which I interpretate the wrong way. I give you a reaction you didn't expect. Now you give me another. And that's how we start in a to have a huge discussion and argument Mm -hmm. and we end up quitting the friendship that happens on a daily basis we end up having war that's how wars uh, happen in politics when they misunderstand one another in the animal world Mm -hmm. that doesn't happen there's no misunderstandings there's so clear communication you exactly know what's about to happen Mm -hmm. and uh yeah there's so many things we can learn from these animals man and that's what formed me as well that's awesome so so when you Moved to South Africa. What was your, you you bought that piece of land, and what was your mission starting from there? Okay, my mission started off to, I knew I want to do something with animals, so the closest 
thing which I could imagine what I could do to, you know, contribute positive to the animal world is rescuing animals. So I wanted to build a sanctuary to be able to rescue, to save certain lives. And I started off with that, with the first line, which was Dexter. And pretty soon, and obviously I was also on social media, but I never planned to become a huge social media personality or have a global wildlife show or whatever. And, um, and yeah, I started off and I documented my daily life like everybody does, whether you work in a bank or you do podcasts or you whatever, you are on Instagram and you make stories and you show what, you, what your life looks like. Yeah. And all of a sudden, social media numbers went up. They saw me, you know, learning how a lion lives, living with a lion, raising a lion, talking to a lion, becoming part of a lion pride. Then we added lions and all of a sudden social media started to boom and I got thousands, millions of views. And within a year I grew over two and a half or almost two and a half million followers. Mm -hmm. And that gave me more perspective. That showed me, okay, listen, I wanted to save single animals, like single lives. But now let's see what, what puts those animals into that situation where they suffer or where you need to save them. It's always the human in 95% of the cases. A human makes a decision and an animal you know, suffers under it. Whether it's we take away their habitats, whether it's they will be abused or used for something, it's usually always the human. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how can he, humanity, how can a human do that? Because he doesn't feel anything for them. He has no emotional attachment. There we go again. So what do we need to do? We need to, first of all, educate them and second, inspire them, bring the animals into their hearts. Yeah. And this goes only together because you, it's, it's quite a fine line. You can't just put viral videos out there and, and, and grab people's attention and then, but not use that attention to educate them again, mm -hmm. because then you become kind of a circus, an mm -hmm. online circus. Mm -hmm. So you always need to make sure that the balance between viral videos and educational videos, which really teaches people something, is in a great balance. Mm. And that's where you can make the big difference in the change. And do you, you gotta keep it positive, right? Exactly, always positive. I'm all about positivity. There's so much, so many platforms they show, they exploit animal abusers, animal cruelty and this and that. Mm -hmm. And my page is not about that. I mean, from time to time, if something, you know, serious happens or they, 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 they really need a, I, I'm doing it as well. Right. But 95% of my content is about positivity because that's what drags people. People are confronted with so much negativity during their day yeah. and in their lives. They don't need even more negativity, especially when you want to inspire them about something. I want them to be confronted with wildlife when it's positive and not when it's negative. And yeah, that's how my mission then changed. Now it went from saving single lives into um, trying globally to make a change and change the future of our planet's wildlife mm -hmm. by making people love animals and then hopefully make them get in action, whether it's you know, donating some money, nor it's getting, you know, physically, personally in action, nor at least just standing up for animal rights when it's time for it. Even though you don't travel to Africa or Asia or wherever doing something, or you don't spend money on it, but when you at least don't do anything, what makes an animal suffer? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and it works quite well so far. Did you get advice on how to, like, interact with the animals or nah. is it all self-taught? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there is no book which describes how to behave with lions or with hyenas. Yeah, because you're, yeah. like, you're, you're wrestling the lion and you're like, sometimes you got to bop them on the nose. Yeah, right. And I was yeah. like, did you learn that? Did you have a boxing instructor or like, did you <laughs> just... It's, you know, it's just, the thing is as well, these animals, they don't speak my language, I speak their language. Hmm. And I had to learn that with learning by doing, you know, raising them, living with them on a daily basis, not only like, every month I see them for a few hours or visit them for a few days. It's like I live with them on a daily basis from morning till evening. Sometimes I sleep in the camps with them. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to see them in situations and out of perspectives where nobody else can see them in those situations or, or, or shares those situations with them. 
So if you then very attentive and you watch them carefully, you learn their body language. And mm. all of a sudden that body language, you don't even have to pay too much attention anymore, but you just, you see it straight away. I, I know straight away what's happening. And are their claws not always out? Cause I noticed you got mm. cut on the shoulder on one, but yeah, so yeah. it's just, they decide to bring the claws exactly. out. Exactly. Right? The younger they are, the less they realize when to use them and when not. Yeah, they're like so baby code repairable. Exactly, they are very uh, playful and then sometimes they end up outside. They use claws on one another as well. Just the problem is lions, their skin is not attached to the flesh, to the meat, oh, wow. which means it is flexible. It doesn't rip open. When they mm -hmm. use the claws, they pull the, the skin down and then it goes back up again. And it doesn't open up and creates a cut mm. until uh, unless it is aggressively done with power, then obviously they end up having cuts as well. With us humans, it's different. As soon as the claw touches our skin, boom, it rips it open and you bleed. So that's a little, you know, it's a little bit different. But the older they get, the more they are aware of their power and the less they use claws and, and stuff like that on you. How long did it take before the lions got comfortable with you? Was it just kind of... The thing is, a lion is a social animal. And yeah. Dexter was the first rescue I had there. So he was looking to socialize with someone because okay. he was alone. Hmm. And the only opportunity he had, he had to socialize with was me. I fed him. I spent time with him. I worked in his camp. I built the pool. I built the overnight quarter. We, you know, it was like... And he always came up to me again. And then, you know, it was like learning by doing. We just became friends. Okay. And out of whatever he learned me afterwards, when the other ones joined uh, to build that bigger pride, we were already a little pride, actually. And they yeah. joined our pride now. Oh, so you think he normalized you to them? Yeah. Like yeah. You, you were the new guy in the crew and he's like, he's cool. <laughs> no, I was not the new guy. The other one. Oh, were they the were new ones. Th right. Yeah. And we decided that they are cool. Oh, that's oh, cool. So. And, but how uh, did you guys talk about that? Who? It's just in how you guys interact with each other. Yeah, it's body language. The thing is, I, I, I got to meet the other lines first. So I bonded with them and I knew them. They knew me and I knew Dexter. So I bring one after the other in and then I show Dexter actually, listen, we are cool with one another. He sees that obviously they first have to sort out amongst each other who is the higher ranked, who has more rights and less rights. And then they get along with each other. I want, yeah, so what was the funniest reaction you got when you told someone what you were gonna do? Well, ha, everything. Like, I, in 99% of the cases, people didn't understand it because nobody can really relate to a situation where when you tell him I'm living with wild animals in Africa, then they think of a bad comedy movie or something like that, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, okay, yeah, you sure gonna do that? And then obviously when it got serious, they were like, are oh, you fucking stupid? How can you throw away a life like that in Switzerland where you have security, where you have financial stability and friends and everything? What you, how can you throw? That's what a lot of people are trying to achieve over tens of years in their lives. Yeah. And are you just throwing it away to go into a country where you don't know anybody, where you want to do something you've never done before, where you don't know the language, not the law, nothing and uh that's something i say I, I'm, I'm actually telling those people um this animals are my passion yeah but that whole project what i'm doing is way more than just having a passion mm -hmm. i really believe i've been put on this planet for this and this is way like there's only a few people they experience that in lifetime there's a lot of people you find a passion in boxing you find a passion in music sorry you, you find a passion in, in, in so many different um, uh, things, but then finding a passion and knowing, listen, this is what I've been put on this planet for. And there's nothing else I want to do in my life than this. And I think before I die, this is what, you know, this is what I need to. And if I die, then I have to die while doing this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I guess- Do you this, worry about that? Dying? Yeah. No. Nice. I mean, I, I really believe like we have our time and when it's time to go, then it's time to go. And if I do what I love and what I think I've been put on this planet for, um, then it doesn't matter if I die tomorrow or in 10 years. Obviously, I would love to live more 10, 20, 50, 60 years to be able to make a bigger change, to you know have an impact 
in this world and what I'm doing to fulfill my mission. But if my time comes, then it comes. Have you learned anything about death uh, by immersing yourself in the animal kingdom? A lot. Yeah. Mm. Circle of life. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Circle of life. I, and, and that's something I really want to also teach the world because we humans are taught from a baby on that death is always something bad. Mm -hmm. It's something terrifying. It's something to be scared of. It's something sad. It's death is just evil. You look, you think of death, you see the devil, you see the hell, you see just disgusting things. Aloneness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but this is not true. Death can, I mean, for a lion to be able to survive, another animal has to die. Everybody who eats a dirt burger is killing animals. Mm -hmm. Everybody who eats a steak or is part of a barbecue or whatever is killing an animal. Just because he didn't see the blood or he didn't hear the animal screaming doesn't mean that it never died. You know what I mean? And I think this is something very important to, to teach humans out there that death is not necessarily something bad. Um, I had to learn this when I started taking care of lions. You know, like the first animal, they can't hump by themselves. I need to get the you know, meat in, how do I do that? Now, or I go to the Walmart or supermarket and I buy just some steaks and some chicken and just throw it in there. With that, I would support the big meat industry, which I'm absolutely not supportive of. Um, Is there Walmart in South Africa? Yeah, some sort of Walmart, right. yeah, mm. similar. It's crazy. Thing, yeah, and, um, and or I try to keep it as natural as possible and get them whole animals from my property, which anyway, you know, there's a lot of herd animals. There is a lot of overpopulations, maybe in a certain species, you have way too many males. Now they fight during mating season, they hurt one another. It, it, it's part of uh, regulating the wild population of the property. And then you have to shoot them, right? Then you take them out and then First of all, you know, I was never confronted with shooting animals, killing animals and stuff like that. So it was quite brutal for me in the beginning. But then with the time I had to realize, man, if if I want Dexter to grow up, if I want him to be healthy, if I want him to become the king he's supposed to be, then he has to eat. Mm. Whether he kills them by himself, which he can't at this stage because he has no parents who can teach him that or so. Um, I have to do it in this case, right? But do you ever worry he's gonna eat your little monkey buddy? Mm -hmm. Like you have that buddy, the monkey. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you JJ ever worry Momo? like Dexter's like gonna like? He won't get to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they are usually not the, you know, the the prey animals of them. Do mm. lions ever but, play with their prey or no? Yeah, they do, especially at young age, and this is part of the training. Now, since uh, Dexter and the 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 pride, they don't have a lot of opportunity to hunt by themselves. They don't get into those situations. But as soon as they do, as soon as I got the uh, possibility the permits to put them in the back of the farm um then they'll do that for sure hmm. sometimes they do that over days it's they'll play brutal yeah wow what do you mean i mean like do they ever like like roughhouse with yeah i mean it's like at a very young age the mom goes grabs a baby you know the baby's hurt or has broken legs or something like that a baby antelope for example mm -hmm. brings it to the young ones and that antelope is there for hours and days and the little ones, they just jump on it and kind of attack it and learn how to Oh, how like, to a, like a heavy bag. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And that's how, and oh, it's wow. super brutal. And I feel sorry if I see that footage and, and stuff like that, but how else should the lion survive? Hmm. I only feel sorry because I have been taught that this is something to feel sorry about. We humans are the only ones who think that far. A lion just sees food. He doesn't seize another animal, you know, and and yeah, it's it's hard to describe, but that's just reality, and we we just gotta accept that. What's your take on hunting in general? Like, mm -hmm. when do you think hunting is acceptable? Okay, I think uh, since you know, uh, I think David Attenberg he said in one of his uh, speeches when they released, I think it was Planet Earth or no, Our Planet. Mm -hmm. Um, he said, once nature determined how we survive, now we determine how nature survives. And this is a fact. Humanity has become so big and so strong and so powerful and so destructive on our planet that we, we created a complete imbalance in nature. So there is huge overpopulations of different species which, which bring an ecosystem, a rainforest, savannas and everything out of range. And um, out of this reason, 
I believe that if you hunt animals or kill animals to regulate populations, then it's necessarily and good for the nature and the environment, right. mm-hmm. which is a fact. Whether scientists nor biologists nor everybody agrees with that, like that's not something you to discuss about. Um, I also believe that, and that that's also something which changed my mind. If you hunt for your own meat, then I support that. Because there is, um, especially in South Africa, I know a lot of people, they make like two hunting trips a year, and then they get so much meat in, they don't go and buy any meat anymore in the store. Mm -hmm. They have their own meat, they make their own sausages, they make their own, they use the entire animal. Hmm? I'm a Joe Rogan fan, I know all about it. Okay. If you follow him on Instagram, he just eats his okay all year yeah and and and, and, and they, they 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 just use the entire animal now if it comes to fun and sports like trophy hunting and stuff like that then i'm out of it mm. because i think it is not a sport you can put up any signs you want to shoot you right. can put up any i don't know dolls or whatever you want you don't have to just shoot an animal to say ah i got it and, and and then you know maybe hang the head somewhere above your 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 TV or something like that, and there I say there I'm out of it. I I can't understand that. I will never understand that, and I'm against it. Why why the tattoo powerless? Is that did you get that after hanging uh, with the lions? This lines? is against faith. You're powerless. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, and there's certain things in life which happen where you just can't do anything about it. It's like just it is the way it is. You can't affect it. You don't have influence on in it. You don't have power about it. So instead of destroying yourself, uh, trying to, or give yourself, you know, the... the I'm trying to learn that. What? To give up control and just have more humility. That, that's it. And, and there's so many things in life which you just can't control. But we humans, again, tend to have the absolute control over everything. Mm-hmm. And if we don't, we start being scared, we start panicking, we start whatever, and that's just wrong. Like. As I said, nature and our planet is a whole system and it's so clued up and clever. There's so many things which just happen, which need to happen. And it's wrong to try to have influence in everything and to do everything the way you think. And animals could probably sense that, right? If you have that fear or if you're trying to control. Yeah. I mean, it's a combination. Uh, Sometimes you have to control to be able to show dominance, to be able to you know, symbolize, listen, you can't just do with me whatever you want. But sometimes it's also important to step back or just say, okay, listen, I I give you the control and I'm not ruling about you or ruling over you. Like you do the rules, I follow the rules, but still don't fuck with me. Like it's, yeah, it's a... Do you think the earth itself is a living organism? The planet? Yeah. We were talking about this. There's this theory that the planet itself is conscious or I think organism. it is I mean if you look at trees and at uh, you know I believe like what what is a living being all right that, that that's another question and I think everything what grows what develops what transforms is life is part of life and our planet in every single aspect is growing transforming and developing mm-hmm. so it is living mm-hmm. not in, in in a sense like not like a human but it is still living because it's transforming. Mm-hmm. That's what my opinion is. What, what have you learned about romance from the animals? Good call. A lot. <laughs> Let me take a sip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take your time. Uh, romance. Well, you know, since, um, for example, lions, they live in prides and um, they are very social. They're actually the only social cats next to male cheetahs, which tend to build little groups called collations. Mm -hmm. That's male cheetahs, um, but which are not super social, but they just use the advantage of being, you know, hunting together and stuff like that. Um, Lions are really proper social animals. They live in prides, which are similar to, for example, a wolf pack or Mm so, and they need that social contact. And there you can actually learn a lot about, you know, affection and love and how to protect one another, loyalty, family, you know, values which actually we humans are looking for in every aspect, but don't get it always. We 
some of us are blessed to grow up in a family which is very close. I have a lot of siblings and they stand together and some they have exactly the opposite or some they have very good friends while others they have no friends at all. And it, there's always somewhere lack where you uh, uh, looking for certain values which I can see in all these animals and in the way they behave with one another or in the way they integrate me in it. And um, yeah, I think it, it talked me all over that, all over that topic, romance and, and, and love and affection that you shouldn't give too much. You shouldn't put too much in. Uh, you shouldn't expect too much. Mm. That's where you get more out of it actually, because the higher the expectation is, the more the disappointment as well is. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a lot of expectation, once you get it, you're like, wow, that warms your heart now, right? Yeah. And this is already one thing. We humans have a lot of expectations towards jobs and friends and family and everything instead of focusing on yourself. And then when something comes in better, it adds to it. It's a it's a bonus. And uh, yeah, we, we could like speak hours about that. Like oh, I've been working nonstop on trying to lower expectations or not just romantically, but just in general, because it, 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 you're right. I mean, it's. Um, it just allows for so many more surprises in life and just absolutely and just joy yeah. um because yeah like I, I think expectation that's like the root of suffering mm -hmm. um uh so that's awesome I, I i gotta know what was the feeling like when you first hugged dexter wow well you know the thing is a lot of people as well me before i entered that world and that life yeah Imagine, you know, the first time when you hug that lion's mane and you, your hands end up in that mane and you feel that power. The thing is, with me, it was a whole... That situation will never happen to nobody because the possibility to just walk up to a fully grown lion and hug him like <laughs> yeah. that is like, there is no chance to do that. Yeah. But if you grow up with them, you get used to it before the time. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. I hug Dexter when he's small. I sleep next to him gotcha. and he grows up and he gets bigger. And then obviously it's not the first time I'm hugging a lion. I'm growing into it. Yeah. But the feeling is that feeling made me change my life. Yeah. So I can't describe it in words, but you can see it according to my life and my lifestyle. Yeah. Um, how strong it is. And, and it is just you can feel it when you watch the videos yeah and after i was watching your videos I was, my girlfriend's dog i was just i was just hugging it for like an hour <laughs> I, was like, I was like give me the love yeah she was confused but <laughs> she'll get she'll yeah get it's also you know there's also a huge difference in um you know you, you get a lot of footage out there on social media as well showing somebody being able to make a, a clip with a lion or a tiger or hugging a tiger or, or just, yeah, having some footage with them. Mm -hmm. But being accepted from such an animal or an, such an animal to accept you in its environment is one thing mm -hmm. so that you can take a picture or whatever. But being literally part of their family, of their pride, being able to speak their language and communicate with them on the same eye level mm -hmm. is a completely other level, is a different type of interaction, is a different type of love, of affection you get out of this. So, yeah, I think the the good thing or what makes my footage as you described like it looks so crazy and so full of harmony and affection and so that's because i'm speaking their language and i'm not their boss they are not trained no none of my animals if i would tell dexter to sit down or walk from a to a he would look at me and think like what the fucking hell are you talking about yeah. like first of all you're not my boss you're not telling me what to do yeah. and second what is that like he doesn't know any signs or any words so yeah. we, i speak his language and i'll work according or function according to his rules when i'm with him mm -hmm. because he's the king i'm entering his world it's not that he's entering my world and uh yeah i think that's a very important part as well this is only possible when we live with them now how many people have the opportunity to live with them mm -hmm. you know that's yeah comes well, one with the other why lions um, it's not only lions. It's just that lions are my favorites. They were the yeah. first on the farm. So it, and, and they are very social. And they, they consume much of my time. So that's why you see more lions. I would say like 50% lions and the rest is different other animals. As well, well, JJ, to be fair, JJ and Momo, they're like my kids. 
the capuchin monkeys mm -hmm. and they wake up with me in the morning they go to bed with me in the evening we sleep in the same bed uh, i have to feed them five times a day so they are also a huge part of my social media and what i'm showing out there but i guess what do you love most about lions everything man it's yeah, like right, that it's social kind of it's that that social aspect they are super social they are they have a super social behavior they they bond with you they become your friend like it's like really having a a friend a new family as well it's like not just how should i explain it and i you have a dog right and my girlfriend does but okay I'm a, yeah I've, I've had dogs too, okay you, yeah. so you guys know that type of affection you can get from a dog That's the best. Yeah. Best. now imagine that times five times ten because you have now five lions and every lion can give you maybe even ten times as much affection than you got from that one dog wow. once you're part of that pride yeah then also imagine that this lion could kill you within two seconds yeah yeah he's so much stronger but he's not using his power to kill you yeah. or hurt you but rather to protect you and be you know that's teach that's you. that's what i think like the, the the fact that every day the lion makes the choice to accept you and not and there to we somewhat go. go against its instinct yeah or prove that it has a different instinct that people would anticipate mm -hmm. and love you it's, it must be an incredible it's unbelievable feeling yeah. that you get yeah it's like you're bringing out the love it's, when you watch your videos it's like you're bringing out the love in all these animals like mm -hmm. with the hyenas the lion the monkey i mean it's yeah, it's incredible. It's like when you watch a Martin Scorsese movie, you know, and I just saw The Irishman, it was pretty great. And, you know, all the mobsters, they're all so charming and friendly. Right, yeah. You're like, oh, all these killers are awesome guys. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You get to hang out with yeah. the killers, but actually just know them as buddies. Yeah. Yeah. When, uh, when, you, when you set up that shot where you had, you had the most incredible, I would I'd recommend all the Stokers, that's what our listeners are, the Stokers, what up, dogs? Um, what up? Where they're... You have one where that's like a wildebeest or something. I'm, I'm not correct there, but four lions are just ripping it apart. And you get into the technical aspects of how they rip it apart. Yeah. And it's pretty incredible the way they tear the limbs up and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I was like, just as someone who's made some videos, I was like, how'd they set up this shot? Like, how do you get the four lions to show up on time? <laughs> how do you get the wildebeest there? Like, are the cameramen nervous when these... No, nah, there's only one cameraman. This is Noe, and he's part of the pride. Okay. So he's actually the only person next to me which can get. And he's here right now. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, oh. dude? What up? Were you hey. scared or no? No, uh, I also know them since they are small, so. You got trust. Yeah. So they 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 trust him and he trusts them and this is the only way how he can get that close and record me like that's of unmeasurable value to have somebody going with me that path and. He has maybe slightly a more distanced uh, 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 relationship because he has to be behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he has to kind of push them back to make it clear. Listen, you you shouldn't be here now. You should be. That's there. what I mean. You got to kind yeah. of how do you yeah. direct the lines? You're like, hey, you're messing up my <laughs> shot. Like you're yeah, blocking like, the sun. But you know when when you it's about feeding, beforehand. yeah. <laughs> when it's about feeding, they don't care about me. They don't care about him. Yeah, they yeah. care about the food. And yeah. if you touch the food, are they gonna, they're gonna get? No, it depends in which situation. They always tell you how far you can go and not. How do they tell you? Uh, body language and sounds and and you most of the time you know we like you the first time you have to learn it you know you have to be very careful and attentive and see their reaction and body language but with the time you know exactly in which situation are you allowed to get closer and in which not. So for example, if there's only limited food after one or two days when they're busy chewing on that zebra for two days, for example, um, then the food becomes limited, less meat. And as soon as it seems for them to be limited, they don't want anybody close to it because now they are not ready to share anymore. Mm. As well, they learned over time that they, we are not in competition with them. We don't take their food away. They don't have to, it's not like, with the other lions from the lion pride, they have to share or somebody else could eat it away and get some more than he gets. Mm -hmm. It's different with us. We are around, we are there, we help. We help making the kill and organizing the food, mm -hmm. but we don't feed off the same animal. And they know that. So that's why they are very, very, how do you call that word? You know, they let us very close to it because they know they don't have to share with us right but still there is also situations where they show you exactly listen step back otherwise i'll fuck you up do they ever get sad or get uh, they, they get kind of disappointed as well and 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 um how do you say disappointed and you know like yeah i think it's disappointed and mad at you yeah 
Do they ever get depressed? They can, but usually when they are in a social environment, they not because they have enough affection they can get from one another. Oh, so yeah, extroverts. Yeah. It's key to have buddies. If you yeah. put a lion, which is a social animal, into a camp all alone, then you it can happen that he that he becomes depressive. Mm. They say the cruelest thing you can do to a person is like put him in solitary confinement. Yeah. 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 What uh, I saw you handling the snakes, like the black mamba and the spinning yeah. cobra. Are those those are still venomous? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow, they're wild uh, snakes. Yeah, we have dude, lots you gotta of be them. careful. <laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, don't worry about you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you keep them around the camp, or do they they just kind of show up? And I you... don't keep them. They, they right, just yeah. live there on the property. So were they were they brought there as a rescue, or no, did no, they no. just they were just already they there? They just live there. Yeah. Okay. In the wild, and it happens since we are living all in the wild, and yeah. my house there is in the wild, and the camps are in the wild. Yeah. It happens that that we cross paths. Yeah. And uh, in such situations, yeah, it can be dangerous. It's not that they attack you, but I like you know usually the workers before I bought that property and I moved in there, they are, they used to just kill those snakes because right. they're venomous, they can, you know, kill a person, an animal, a dog. And um, out of this reason to protect themselves, they killed them. And I rather prefer to catch them and just relocate them, put them into the back of the farm. There is enough food for them, they can live there wild and, you know, there's no reason for me to kill them. Almost no reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, we have a baby as well there. We have the dogs around the house. Can you be have really a baby? Not me, no. But uh -huh. my farm manager's baby, Yuka, he's my godson. He's two and a half years old now, and he walks around, he runs around. Oh, he was in the video with the snake, right? With, with, with the, the big one, yeah. yeah with but that was not a venomous one. Right. Yeah, the, the, the ones which I'm, you know, handling easy and gentle and with other people, and so they are non-venomous, they are constrictors. Hmm. And they are also not wild ones. They have been born in captivity. For example, the very big one, Lulu, she's also an exotic species. She's not from native to South Africa. So I couldn't just release her back into the wild. She comes from a breeder which had to sell his whole, you know, breeding facility, whatever, uh, or close down. And then he just, you know, try to sell all the animals over to people. And then that's where, for example, how Lulu came to me. And uh, yeah, I use her for educational reasons, to make educational videos, and super cool to have her, yeah. Nice. But back to the venomous ones, they just live around there. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, obviously I catch them and then I that's release cool. them back into the wild. That's awesome. Yeah, I had a snake, I had a ball python, cream python. A ball python, cool, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah they're amazing snakes. Yeah. Man. He, uh, we had a special bond, and then my buddy Jack, after graduation, he, he took him, and he's, they're living together nice. But cool. did they live a long time? I think he's still alive. Nice. Yeah, he's yeah. still kicking it. Um, cool. How yeah. long do lions live? Uh, it, well, in the wilds, they get up, up to ten years, and maybe even a little bit more. It depends on how you know strong, dominant they are. Um, in captivity, they can become fifteen, twenty as well. Because you know there is less, um, you know, danger factors. and less, yeah, exactly factors which can take. Do you animals out. die of old age in the wild? Yeah, it can happen. It depends what kind of animal. Like an antelope, course. no shot. Difficult. <laughs> yeah. I, I looked it up on Google one time. <laughs> yeah, it's very difficult because yeah. you know they may, as well. You know, lions they are um, uh, um, opportunistic hunters. Yeah. So they first go for the old ones, the right. sick ones, or the hurt ones, or. And if you get old, then you're just slower. And yeah. you, you know, it's like with us humans and you're more of a target for whatever. Yeah, that's a, hey, that's a senior citizen, back yeah. off. If yeah. you had to give out senior superlatives, like, like when you graduate high school, they say like, oh, this person was the best dressed. This person was like uh, the best at sports. Who's, who, who do you think's the nicest animal? Mm. Good question. Yeah, man, I can't. Like, it's like when you ask somebody of your five kids who's your favorite. Right, right? You, don't, yeah. you don't want them How to find I, out. Yeah. yeah. How, I, <laughs> but it's, it depends on my mood, actually. Right. You know, it, it depends. It, sometimes I'm in the mood to just chill with Chucky, rather the hyena, rather than with Dexter or any lion or the monkeys. Sometimes I just want to be with Snow because I know his type of character, how he behaves and how he is, right. fits perfectly to my mood now. And it would just be so cool to be with him alone without the other ones. But I can't have that, you know? So when I go in, 
then all of them come together. So I got to deal with all of them for the first 10 minutes until they calm down. And then when everybody's laying down and chilling out, then I can decide who I want to. So you got to give with. attention to everybody. It's like in the you, beginning. Yeah, yes. when you host a party, you want to make everybody feel comfortable. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. Dude, I can't believe you just hang out with hyenas. Like I saw the hyena and I was like, yeah, I, you know, there, it's such a fun video to watch because you get this nervousness when you're yeah. watching. You're like, dude, it's a hyena. And like all I know about hyenas is like that they're savages and from like Lion King that you can't mm -hmm. trust them basically. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they live in the Badlands. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like you're snuggling up with it they're absolutely different than what you learned in uh lion, lion king, king yeah are any animals yeah. assholes no no right they're all the way they're supposed to be that's the cool thing you know we humans can be assholes by mm -hmm. our own choice right. animals can't they are just the way they are mm -hmm. and they have no reason to act like an asshole if it seems to us that they are an asshole then it's just because it's natural, but it's not because they want to be an asshole or because they have like bad thoughts or something like that. Right. Or They're not malicious intentions. or something. No, no. Do, do the monkeys ever get mischievous? Because I, I, yeah, I was well, they, the they are assholes. Yeah, the monkeys, was, they are right. serious yeah, assholes. Was, yeah, that's was, the human side of it. Yeah, yeah. I was in the monkey forest in Bali mm -hmm. and I, had a, I brought in a bunch of bananas. Yeah. And then this one monkey, I, uh, it was a bag of bananas. Yeah. And this one monkey came up and just started pulling on the bag and I had mm -hmm. a little tug of war sesh going on. And he ripped it open. He took all my bananas. He got dominated by that. He, he yeah. got dominated me. Yeah. I respected it. I dude, was we'll like, go yeah, back one day and find that. No, I'm kidding. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he was my favorite one. But uh, yeah, they. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Monkeys, they are very... I don't know if it's the intelligence or... I think it must be the... Their size of the brain must be bigger than the one of... You know, they, they can just combine things. They can use tools. They yeah. can, you know, they realize things which, for example, a dog wouldn't realize or rarely yeah. realizes. And uh, it's super cute. It's super amazing to watch and to see and to experience. But yeah, they can be quite evil. Well, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, I, I saw a couple of things about chimps. Like one in the wild, like a big chimp will punch a smaller chimp. And then the smaller chimp, you literally see it feel bad about itself. And then it'll walk over to a chimp that's smaller than it and like displace and does, its anger yeah. and punch that one. Yeah. And you're like, okay, that's like, that's human beings in a nutshell right yeah. there in terms of just like shit goes downhill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was a documentary, Project Nim, where scientists in the 70s, anthropologists try to raise chimps in mm -hmm. human environments. So literally like a brownstone in New York and they have a chimp. Mm -hmm. But then like once in a while the chimp, it'd be like a totally normal kid 90% of the time, but then 10% of the time it would just take somebody and they're freakishly strong yeah. and just yeah. swing it back and forth and like, yeah. you know, crack their shoulder and cream mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, well, you know, the all these animals, they are not meant to be in human environments. Yeah, yeah that, that seems to me the, the, the difference. And in, that's just yeah. a fact. And we need to get human thoughts and brains off trying to humanize everything what they touch and everything what they see and interpretate yeah. everything out of a human perspective, which is just wrong. If you... If you look at nature, our human super intelligence to, you know, everything what we do, how we live, it has just no space in the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. It should. And actually, we are part of nature. We are animals, too. Mm -hmm. I don't see us as being something else, but we act completely differently mm -hmm. and we think way too far. And, you know, the, the profit of money and all that. Animals, they don't have that, you know. Yeah, they we have, have abstract concepts. Exactly, yeah. exactly. What kind of change would you like to see on Earth within ten years? Um, wow, there's so many things, man. But the main change is it one thing I can say now? Or what? Uh, you can say a bunch of things. Yeah, let it okay. rip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, first of all, we need to. Well, that's actually quite complicated, man. We got time. Yeah. You know, the thing is, we need to decrease our population. Oh, mm. dude, you're Malthusian, huh? Yeah, N not not necessarily, you know, I don't want to say we need to kill now uh, half of the yeah, human. Yeah, don't say part. that. <laughs> no, but it's like... Even if you think it, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, well, the biggest problem is human-wildlife conflict yeah. on our planet at the moment. And this is because the cities and villages and human population grows that fast that we end up in their habitats and the villages, which were once that big, they are now that big. You we're know? an invasive species. And exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and here, lion prides and elephants and all kinds of wildlife and animals used to live. Mm -hmm. And now we're taking away their habitats. Yeah. And now 
they become an overpopulation in the rest of the world. Now they eat too much, then there is too less food. It's t total imbalance yeah. because of the growth of the human population. Yeah, Joe Rogan described this as like, when you, from a plane, we look like bacteria. Yeah, it's like yeah. AIDS on, on the human planet. We, yeah. we just continue and we destroy our own, you know, like, like our we destroy resources. What, 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 yeah, exactly. And uh, I think since it is gonna be hard to regulate our growth, you know, by birth control or whatever, you know, they did it in China already and you can only have one kid or whatever. Uh, but instead of that, let's just protect habitats. Let's mm -hmm. just decide, okay, if you want to continue to pr reproduce that fast, then you got to live on top of one another mm -hmm. rather than just extending the villages and, and taking away more habitat of the animals. Mm. So we need to protect more wild habitats for these animals that they have home to live in because we are not ready to share with them, obviously. If, if elephants end up in a village, happened the other day in China, uh, no, in India, you saw that footage mm -hmm. all over social media where they burned the elephants or they threw some Molotov cocktails. Happened. And so, yeah, it w went viral like a village and then the elephants ended up in that village and then mm. they started to put them on flame and so because they destroyed their uh, fields where they grew some fruits and this and that. And, you know, it's like yeah, human terrible. wildlife conflict, like yeah. everywhere, India, Africa, China, Australia, everywhere you got these problems because there is no fence. So if there is no fence, the village can just continue, uh, you know, getting bigger and the animals can just end up in there. Hmm. Do you get mad at people ever? Like, do you ever like just like when you like just the. Uh, well, you know, it always depends. Not really. It's also the evil we seem to be and the much we can destroy the much we can build as well so i really believe in the good human as well i mean we are able and capable to destroy so much but what about all the good humans what about those ones which are ready to build which are ready to do something great and and give something back to that planet and instead of just being negative about the bad ones which don't care or destroy, let's just build a front of good ones, which are ready to rebuild and protect. Mm. And you can't achieve that while you're putting your energy into the negative ones. You can only achieve that if, as long as you put energy into the good part of it. And I believe in, in that actually. So I don't have time to think bad about humans or animals or anything like that. Rather, let's keep it positive and try to build good. Were you always really positive? Yeah, I think so. I've been pretty much my entire life plus minus like that. That's good. Yeah. That's probably why you were so good at finance too, right? Yeah. I mean, do you think it was like a similar so. mindset that helped you succeed there that's helped you succeed in this? Yeah, second? It's, it's the communication with humans. It's mm. building relationships. It's understanding one another. It's putting myself into your body and 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 thinking, okay, what is right? How would you feel in this situation when I say this or when I say that? The same I do with the animals. I don't, I, I don't focus on myself. That's also something what humans do a lot wrong with animals. They, they put in the room with a snake or with, with whatever kind of animal. And now you think about yourself. How should I react? What should I do? Mm -hmm. How do I look like now? And on, it's all about yourself and you don't focus on the animal. For me, it's different. If I'm put in a room with an animal I don't know, I look at the animal. And I first try to see what is the animal about before I start to react to it. Because every human being, same as every animal, is different. So if, if I put somebody in there, a human, you first need to find out what is he about before you talk, start to talk or listen to a certain type of music, mm -hmm. something like that, to not, you know, confront each other with something. And uh, yeah, I think it's more about trying to get out of your body and focus on what is in front of you instead of focusing on yourself. Like expand your energy outwards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if, if you're in a situation where you're in a room with an animal, how do you sort of assess what's going on? And then, like, may, can you take us through like an example of like what a, kind of animal? Um, let's say uh, you see a lion that you're not familiar with. Okay. In a room. Yeah. What What are the steps you take? Okay, I would stand still. Mm -hmm. And then I would look at him mm -hmm. and I would see his body language. Is he walking towards me? Is he feeling insecure? Is he being dominant, trying to impress me with something? Mm -hmm. And according to his reaction, then the, whatever he does, 
I will react towards it. Mm -hmm. And first of all, you always react in, in, in general, you keep yourself dominant because you don't want to sub be submissive as soon as you do that to an animal which is high in a food chain, which is used to other animals being submissive to it. Um, you get the risk to be attacked. Mm -hmm. So you make yourself big because lion is a predator and most likely is about to kill you. <laughs> so you want to make yourself big and, 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 and demonstrate, listen, I'm not scared of you. So if something is not scared of a lion, he thinks, why is that something not scared of me? Mm. Usually everything is scared of me because I'm a lion. Now, if that something is not scared of me, it must have a natural reason. They don't know about humanity. They don't know about how clever we are, that we can pretend to be something. Animals, usually, they don't pretend to be something. And if they do, they have it as a defense mechanism, like little bugs or birds which can blow themselves up. And then all of a sudden, you know, the predator runs away because they blew themselves up now with different funny colors and bright colors and that symbolizes venom and poison and they think okay i'm rather gonna let that guy be right mm -hmm. that's a de defending mechanism so we don't have that but we have the intelligence to imitate or we have the intelligence to to you know uh pretend to be something to be bigger to be dangerous mm -hmm. that's why for example a wild lion in the wild if i first would run towards a wild lion and scream he would run away first. Mm -hmm. With the time, he will most probably then realize, oh man, that guy's just doing a, some sort of show I'll fuck him up now. But, <laughs> yeah. but in the first place, he will be unsure because he doesn't know what a human is and he's totally confused. Why is now this living being running towards me trying to kill me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Does it help to work out? Uh, yeah, definitely. It is actually very important that, you know, that whole um, love is they, they can feel your power as well and your weight and everything because what they do also with one another when they come and say hello, they rub their head towards you and then they lean towards you, right? And if you would then kind of, you know, almost fall over all the time and, you know, if they feel that you are not stable and that you're weak, it gives them some sort of dominance, extra dominance. And it gives them some sort of extra feeling like I can do with you what I want. Like, you know, you're lower than me. So you have to actually show them if they come, um, you lean against them and then you hug them and you grab them and they want to feel you like they are brothers, man. They want to, you know, they, yeah. they want that roughness. They need it. It's not. I that. love wrestling, my brother. Yeah. yeah. It's and, my favorite thing <laughs> in the world. Good. <laughs> and uh, that's what they need to feel. And that's where they where they see you on the same eye level, and that's the cool relationship you want with them. You don't want to be underneath, you don't want to be above. Hmm. You want to be on the same eye level, and that's cool. I think humans need to touch more, right? Yeah, of course, man. It's all about touchment and so like. In Switzerland, 100%. is what's, what's the, is it a lot of touching or? You know, in my world, I usually hug a lot. Even though when I enter another culture, sometimes people are shocked because now there is that that stranger and he just walks up to me and hugs me when he says hello. But I think after they got the hug, they appreciate it. Yeah. Because it felt somehow good. Right? Yeah. Unless you're yeah. stinking or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah, do animals yeah. respond to your smell? Like, is there like, you ever put on like the wrong deodorant nah, or something? They do when I, for example, when I've been with Chucky Daina and I go straight into the lion camp, they won't, like, they will walk away from me. What if you've, like, not to pry too deep, but what if you've, like, made love recently? Can they tell? I don't know. <laughs> Fair. That's, that's, a, that's a hard question. Yeah. They, they definitely can tell by the smell and so that somebody is a female or a male. I think they can maybe feel or smell the test, if you have a lot of testosterone, because yeah. Usually, I think I'm not sure. I'm not a doctor or biologist, but we 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 have a certain, emph I don't know how you call that. What, what pheromones? Pheromones. Oh yeah, exactly. And that can be maybe more or less. And they have a very sensitive, you know, uh, 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 nose. So I, I think they, maybe they I used can to smoke. work out with two buddies, Tej and Andrew. And I wasn't having sex, but Andrew was. And Tej could always tell when Andrew had had sex before a lift. Oh seriously? Yeah, he'd be like, "You just boned." Well, it, what it, was it about? You could tell. I could never. Sense I, the pheromones? I hadn't had sex, so I didn't know. But Andrew would be like, "How'd you know?" And yeah. Tesh would be like, "I can tell." 
Uh, maybe uh, maybe a lion would give you an extra head bump. Yeah. But it's crazy, for it's example, like, nice for you, the dude. monkeys. Yeah. Nice, dude. The monkeys, they can feel when, for example, when Yuka was born. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, I think even, like, even when he was one year old, when he was still feeding off the breast of yeah. Sharon A, his mother. Yeah. Um, the monkeys would always try to go to the tits. Yeah. Because they felt there is milk. Really? And they want to milk. Interesting. Yeah, and that's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's so cool. Are we hopping into questions? Yeah, should we? Yeah. Do you want to do, do we have a mid roll? Uh, yeah, guys. Um, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that we are the most well manicured lawn on the block. When I'm, I'm talking about a lawn, I'm talking about your pubes. Um, we got the perfect package. It also comes with a pair of Manscaped boxer briefs that'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. It's time to upgrade those overused pair of boxers to Manscaped's high performance anti chafing boxer briefs. That's what I'm talking about. Tis the season to Manscaped. The holidays are around the corner, guys. Yeah. So uh, look good for your fam, dudes. Yeah. Get yourself, your dad, your brother, and your friends the best gift, uh, gift of all. The Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0. And yeah, I just a personal touch on that. I mean, there's no better gift. Um, for the whole fam. Yeah. For the whole fam. I'm just going across the board, Lawnmower 2.0. You're going to send a strong message to your dad if you get him the Manscaped thing. So get 20% off free shipping with the code GoD20 at manscaped.com. Thank you. All right. All right. Shamans of Stoke, what up? First, I want to shout out Stephen King for being a phenomenal writer and allowing Frank Darabont to adapt a few of his writings into movies. I didn't realize he flexed so hard outside the horror genre. I just wrapped up The Green Mile, and I haven't wept like this since Sean McGuire broke down the emer- emotional barriers of Will Hunting. I thoroughly enjoy an ex- inexorable cry from a powerful story like that of John Coffey and Mr. Jingles. What films invariably make you reach that point of sweet, cathartic release? Hopefully, is this... Hopefully the full squad is present for this one. I know you, JT, Chad, and Strider have softer sides and will provide dank answers, but I'm interested in what films make Joe shed tears in silent acquiescence. Thanks, be well. I showed a couple buddies of mine The Game, directed by David Fincher. We did not see eye to eye on this one, and that hurt because I wanted them to like that film as much as I did. What did you guys think? You know, I've seen it, but I don't quite remember it. Um, I'll have to revisit it. I mean, Dave Fincher's a good director, though. Is there, Dean, is there a film that you like that makes you cry? Which one? Is there a movie you like that makes you cry? Bro, there's a lot of movies which make me cry, man. I'm super <laughs> sensitive if, if it comes too, to man. that. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's so many movies, man. Uh, one movie was uh, Machine Gun Preacher. Oh, yeah, the Jared, Jared Butler. Butler. Yeah. Like when he gave up his entire life to save those kids in Uganda. And, you know, that whole story. And there was different scenes where, you know, my eyes were watering. And Did you watch that and, before you moved to South Africa? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it pretty inspiring for you. Though. It was super inspiring. Yeah, yeah. That's great. What about you, Chad? Uh, well, actually, keeping with the theme, Lion King, when Simba climbs up Pride Rock, that, that was that one. that gets me. Dude, great. I saw the live action one too. Wow, it had the same effect. I was bawling. My favorite scene, which got me really crying, was when he saw Mufasa, his father, in that, you know, in the water. Oh when, yeah. When uh, Rafiki, Rafiki, the yeah. monkey, showed him. That his father actually didn't die. He's still yeah. here watching over him. Yeah. And then he speaks to his dad. Yeah. And his dad tells him, "Listen, you have a, a how do you say, a legacy? You know, yeah. you have a." He's like, "Remember rem- who you wow, are." Wow, I mean, that father son stuff. This is so strong, man. Yeah. yeah. This is just amazing. It's awesome. Yeah, my, I just uh, a really recent one. I watched on the plane, and on planes, I cry more. I guess that's a it's a thing. Um, <laughs> I watched Blinded by the Light, which is about a kid who. Uh, a Pakistani kid in London who falls in love with Bruce Springsteen's music. And uh, it's a father-son story, and it just had me sobbing. I mean, I was just wow. sobbing the whole time. And then the movie I cried out the hardest, and it's kind of embarrassing, was Freedom Writers, mm. where Hillary wow, Swank's I like a it. white rescue lady. Yeah. This one yeah. was amazing, I was man. bawling the whole time. Yep. When she tells Mario, because she can tell he's tanking the class on purpose, that she's not going to accept his like less than yeah, 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 honest yeah. work. Dude, my brother was like, you got to calm down. I was <laughs> like, I can't, bro. <laughs> yeah. I can't, dude. <laughs> Dude, that reminds There's me. There's good people out there. One movie that got me was a Hardball with yes, Keanu Reeves. Dude. Which Have one you seen is that? that one? Yes, I'm not sure. it's the where he uh, he he coaches this baseball team, Keanu Reeves. G baby, uh, G baby. There's just, just the sweetest one. kid you ever met. G baby, he gets shot. Yeah, and he gets he bites a bullet. 
Yeah. Oh shit, dude, it's, it's he'll crazy, and it's got a killer soundtrack. I, I was in fourth grade and I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what's up, Sultans of Stoke? Much love and greetings. I'm writing about a situation that has been causing me some inner t- turmoil because I don't know how to address it without coming off like a total dick and without potentially ruining a friendship. Basically, my GF of two years has this friend, a friend who has told her in the past that he was in love with her. She informed me at the beginning of our relation. She shut him down at the time because she didn't feel the same. She told me at the very beginning of our relationship. She still kept in touch with him while we were going out, but it was only an occasional message here and there. But recently, we've moved to the same town as this dude, and she's been messaging him more and more, meeting up with him for drinks, etc. He always asks her to kick it with him, but he never invites me or even asks how I'm doing. To be honest, he never seems to mention me, and when I see him, he looks sheepish. I really feel like I know he's in love with her still, and would take the chance to be with her at any opportunity. It's now at the point that they message each other every day, every night before bed, before she cuddles up to me and would get down to some saucy action. She insists that the relationship is purely platonic, but I can't help but feel weirded out by this. I know this dude is really into her. What's more is that he has recently become her manager. She is a small-time solo musician and performer, which I view as just another excuse for him to spend time with her. Do I act chill and let this slide until I know something has actually happened, or do I tell her that this is making me feel weird and try to set some kind of boundary? I have faith that my girlfriend loves me, but I'm still completely unstoked about how much time she is devoting to this friend, who clearly has feelings for her, and who I know is secretly hoping she breaks up with me and goes out with him instead. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Wow. What do you think? Yeah, I think the situation is pretty clear in my eyes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, you know, I, I think we humans tend to, to uh, how do you say, to hold on things uh-huh. for way too long. Right. Things which are just too heavy and drag us down. And as soon as we... We, we manage to let go from it. We really feel how relieving it is actually or how, you know, how, how it builds you up. It lets you stand up again. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think everybody has to listen to his heart. I actually don't like to give advices to um, 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 such relationship uh, struggles because we will never be in that situation. We have been in our own situations with our own girlfriends and ex-girlfriends and love uh, experiences. But as long as you're not in that situation yourself, you know, you can give any kind of advice, but it will have a completely different effect to that person. So I'd rather give just a general advice, how you felt in certain situations, yeah. instead of saying what he should do now, because it's absolutely up to him, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, it's just, I think we keep on holding on things for way, way too long. I did that so many times. And uh, years later, I thought, oh, actually, I could have ended that already two years ago. But I still somehow believed in it and loyalty. And of course, you don't, uh, you, fight, you fight for something. You fight for love. You don't want to just give it up quick, quick. But it needs to be. Is it a both. fear of discomfort, you think, that makes us do that? Um, like a fear of having that uncomfortable conversation? Yeah, of course. There's so many fears we have, like being alone is one. I mean, you still have somebody or maybe finding someone else again or uh, building up what you built over time. You know, yeah. you, you're in a three year relationship maybe. And then uh, it was a struggle in the beginning to get to know one another very well. And, you know, and that's actually also a problem. We end up in, I th- that's my opinion. We end up w- way too click- quick in a relationship before we even know one another. Right. And then, you know, and then you end up getting to know one another while you're in that relationship. Yeah. But then you're already in it. You can't decide not to be in it anymore. You already said we, we are in a relationship, even though you didn't see all the faces of that person. So actually, that's one advice in general. Get to know that person first. Give yourself time, even a year or two. And if that person finds someone else and ends up in it, then that's how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. But if that person is really meant for you, when you're already in contact with that person, it will lead to that mm-hmm. point. And uh, too many people, they stress too quickly. They are scared to be alone. They are scared to, I don't know what they're scared of. Dude, yeah. you're a beast. Yeah, I, I mean that in the brain way. Thank no, you. I love it. No, uh, yeah, so what you're saying is you just gotta let go, let things happen as they do or as they may. I feel like a lot of it too. People um, they feel a threat to like their personal power. Yeah, and uh, that's a lot of. And if you just let go, that's. And if we are totally honest, form, yeah. If we are honest to ourselves, we know the solution all the time. Right. We know what's fact. We just don't want to believe it. Right. Yeah. He knows. 
exactly what what is fact and what's going on but he doesn't want to believe it yeah and me too i know a lot of things which i may be still doing wrong but certain things i just don't want to believe it because the current situation is maybe comfortable or you know yeah. it's just a lot of you know it seems to be a lot of work but fact is we just extend problems like this we just extend it yeah. if we already know that it's not going to work whether it's a business relationship love friendship or something like that just rather make the decision now life is about making decisions and otherwise yeah. life will make this decision for you and that's not always the right one yeah emma what do you think do you hear this one mm -hmm. right. the truth um, will set you free yeah i Here i think go. he's right i think you gotta give yourself some time to feel out the situation but that does feel a little shady what that chick's doing yeah, I, I concur. But I also think you just need to be open and honest and ask the questions you need to ask of your partner. Just, like, ask for the truth. And if you don't think you're getting the truth, then there's a deeper issue with your relationship than that dude. Right? Right, like, she can't commit. She's kind of hedging a little bit. Yeah, and, like, if you can't if you can't ask questions of your partner and believe that they're telling you the truth, then, like, you have some trust issues in this relationship in and of itself. Right? Like, if she says she's, nothing's happening, you got to either trust it. And if you don't, then there's something else to be addressed. I agree 100%, but I also think that the fact that he has to ask that question here and ask for advice and the fact that this situation makes him feel so uncomfortable mm -hmm. is already a sign that it is wrong. Uh, yeah, so I think the main message for this guy probably is everything is unfolding as it should and he's going to be a-okay -okay in the end. Yeah. Yeah, as, as long and as I he, think I would tell him to say something though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would yeah. tell him to say. Yeah, something. I mean, just yeah, in yeah. general, just. But to, if it doesn't shake out the way you want, yeah, yeah, no matter what happens, against faith, don't, you're powerless. Yeah, let, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I do. Don't agree try with to that control completely. it. Let yeah. go. You'll be okay. Yeah, I think that's right. What up, Epic Stokers? My dogs and I do an annual golf trip to Palm Springs. That's like a you know Palm Springs. Mm -mm. It's like a, a desert town that's like two hours from here. People go there okay. to party and play golf and stuff. All right. Coachella's nearby as well. Okay. You going to Coachella this year? No, uh, I've never been. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't know Does if that I interest have time. You? Have you been to like music festivals? Yeah, and yeah, stuff? I've been already. Uh, but you know, recently, the past two, three years, I was so busy with what I'm doing in Africa. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty hard for me to. Did you party when you were like uh, in I finance? Love. I used to like before that. I used to run two nightclubs. Oh really? Oh, that's Andrew. right. Yeah. Andrew told yeah, he told me that. Yeah. Oh, so you used to get after it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot. <laughs> do, you, do you miss that at all or no? Uh, sometimes, of course, yeah. Yeah. I mean, now I'm pretty isolated in the wild in Africa. There's right. not a lot of opportunities for me to party. Mm -hmm. That's why when I travel or when I go back to Switzerland or, you know, it takes me traveling that whole mission, sometimes I allow myself to go on a party or just yeah, I go crazy. I mean, I'm still 20. I just tur turned 27, right? It's amazing. So wow. my life is still quite young and yeah. All right, what up, Epic Stokers? My dog and I do an annual trip to Palm Springs. We have a dank time golfing, hanging out, and hitting the bars. One of our friends always invites a schmoll. A schmoll is uh, someone in the friend group that no one likes. We, okay. A renob. Yeah, yeah. Which is boner backwards. Uh, who constantly complains, throws clubs, and brings our stoke level down. How do we tell our bro or the schmoll that this dipshit needs to stay at home? Keep up the good work. <laughs> so, like, basically they go on an annual trip with all their boys, mm -hmm. and this one guy keeps bringing a boy that, like, is kind mm -hmm. of ruining the mood for yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah, I got mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty simple. Just say it straightforward. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the problem with us humans. Yeah. That's yeah. the... We, we go the round about the communication, way. right? Yeah. Which is which we all fail at times, and yeah. I think just be open, not not rude. It's also the it's the question how you say something. Mm -hmm. You can put something this way or that way, mm -hmm. but just say open and honest. Listen, we together we spoke about it, and we came to the conclusion that this just kills our vibe, and it was yeah. not the same than before, and we would appreciate to keep it in our circle yeah. and without that person. Yeah, and then yeah. He lowers Stoke, and he can't. Do you, is it. there is there a schmoll amongst the lions? Yeah. Really? There is. Nyla. Really? Wow, she destroys so many vibes, man. No Whoa. way. Yeah, what does she do? Because she's uh, she's just looking for so much attention. Yeah. If I got some love or give some love to one of the other lions, she goes just to come straight into it. Yeah. There is even a video where you where she acts pretty aggressively. Yeah. Um. Uh. Towards Leo, her brother. I think I saw that one. Yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. like like her head is here and she's yeah. like goes crazy after him and yeah. i'm like nyla chill man and 
and yeah. she goes back and then but still she continues to kind of you know how do you say growl or like growl growl yeah and then uh yeah just being bitchy yeah, yeah. interesting man all right, last question. What's up, Sultans of Stoke? To make a long story short, I'm a freshman in college. My roommate has high school habits. She sleeps all day and only does her homework late at night. She almost never eats, and I've never seen her brush her teeth or change her bed sheets. Oh, I'm the exact opposite of this. I don't want these bad habits to drain my academic stoke. Any ideas on how to confront this tough situation? Thanks a ton. Again, like before, just sit down and be open and honest, but in a, you know, with manners and in mm -hmm. a polite way. Yeah. It's a tough combo to have. Yeah, know? a lot of people, they, or for example, we had that situation as well. You know, you got a friend and he smells bad at times, you know, or I don't know, does some things which people don't like or so, and uh, you don't want to be rude somehow. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to make that person feel stupid, but you only will make that person feel stupid if you say it in a rude way. Yeah. If you just say it in an absolute respectful way and you got to get the solution ready, right? Yeah. Think of a solution. How could it be? And then say what you don't like and put the solution at the same time on the table so that the person is not just left with a problem and now the person has to get right with it by itself. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's how I solve most of my problems with other people. Have you had conversations like that with friends? Yeah, of course. We had. A, I mean, I also, in, back in Switzerland, I used to live with friends in a house, for example, or you know, you share a house, an apartment or something like that. And there's always situations where some person has certain habits which you don't have. And, you know, you just can't adapt in certain situations to one another. And then you just speak about it and you say, well, okay, but what is then the solution? Well, let's do it once like this or once like that, or mm -hmm. let's just keep it somewhere in the middle. And then it's about both of them to do their part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Do you like to dance? Yeah, of course, man. Oh, Who's nice. your favorite? What's your favorite thing to dance to? Um, man, just good music. I mean, I'm not that much into heavy metal and stuff like that. Sure, me too. Yeah. More like, you know, you uh, like EDM. Yeah, no, more like hip hop, hip yes. rap, um, African music. My um, hips respond best to that too. Brazilian music, funk. Were um, you yeah. were you uh, an Avicii fan or are you? Uh, he's um, Swedish, yeah, sometimes. Right? Yeah, he's, from, he's, he's from Sweden. Yeah. He's from Sweden, not from yeah, Switzerland. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people they confuse. No, yeah. you <laughs> kind of <laughs> realize that. You feel to me like the DJ Steve Irwin. Like, oh, you're dude. like the cool <laughs> update of it. I like yeah. that. That's, that's pretty nice, man. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, we, we bleached our hair for uh, the coral to bring awareness to coral bleaching because when okay. water gets too hot, oh, it, wow, the coral okay. bleaches itself. So it's out of sight, out of out of dome, but now it's on our domes. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, but I know she that's bleached cool. hair too. Yeah. yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. All I right. Like it. That's I, all. I was just thinking about lions boking a schmoll. They're because our thing, our thing, our phrase is "boking a schmoll." It's like how you get the schmoll out of the friend group. Yeah, and a lot, and we get tons of questions about it. You know, like how do we go about doing this? But I feel like lines are much more straightforward. Yeah, yeah, you that's just gotta, the point. You just, just got to adopt that, you know, animal nature and just be straightforward and honest. Because mm -hmm. I feel like lines will just straight up boke the schmoll. Yeah, yeah, Dexter will be like Nyla. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, there is lots yeah. of videos where you can see it on my page. Yeah. Like Dex, if Nyla does some shit or annoys somebody, yeah. she's gonna get a proper slap and that's it. Yeah. Well, th we don't have to slap one another, but yeah. right. you know. A they, verbal slap. Exactly, a verbal slap. If it's like too rude. Right. If they, they just, you know, if they, how do you say, it, make you mad or, you know, stress you by a certain behavior they do, but not like not specifically towards you, you just say in a polite, normal way. And not, in f you know, sometimes you have to measure like, do you want to say it in front of everybody? Because as soon as you put pressure on a person, the person starts to want to defend herself. Mm -hmm. So uh, an argue or a fight will start. So often it can help that you take that person out of the group, you smoke a cigarette with the person or have a drink and you say listen between us you know this and that and so and so what do you think can we you know don't you want to work on that a little bit i just think it will be you would even feel more comfortable like that and and then that's how i like to solve problems and if it's something a huge problem which is with everybody then of course you can you know bring it in a round but never corner a person because yeah. as soon as somebody gets cornered it's with us as well if you have five people speaking against something what you do you want to protect yourself or you walk away yeah. from it you know yeah groups so. groups are scary like that yeah, you absolutely. get on defense and you start worrying about what everybody's thinking you're not even arguing with one person you're trying to like 
perform for five people there and you go. end up not saying what you yeah. think yeah at all yeah and the same is with animals as well you're just trying to protect your status basically there we group. go yeah i hate that when i can feel it in myself when i get mm -hmm. that's actually what my thing is about um because now we're gonna we do an of the week so we do our beef of the week which is either a person or a situation or a thing that we're upset with or it could be a famous rivalry or beef throughout history yeah. Yeah, so Chad, you want to kick it off? Yeah, my beef of the week is with this pole in the parking garage this morning. I scraped the side of my car on no. it. Yeah, no, it's not too bad. But I, I got a beef with it because I, um, I I did valet, and I was pulling out, and I turned too early, and uh, just the, the back right wheel well just caught right on it. And uh, it was one of those situations where... I couldn't just like, I, like I knew backing up, it was gonna make it worse, but I had to back up. Uh, Cause it, it, was, it just like crunched and I was like, oh crap. And then I was like, I, I can't go forward cause it's gonna get the rest of the car. Oh. So I have to back up and just like double down on the damage. So I, <laughs> dude, the valet guy was just watching me and he's like, he was just like, oh dude <laughs> and I was like yeah dude I fucked up I fucked up big time man yeah. and then there's a guy in another car who's watching me and he was just sitting in his car just watching everything unfold and I was like what's up dudes I'm gonna fuck up my car a little bit more just <laughs> um, so yeah my beef is with that pole uh, what up pole um, you zinged me good dude in terms of uh, the paint job on my Ford Escape hybrid so um, that's my beef but I'm not mad about it you know I, I made it it's all right. Fire, so he fucked up your car. No, no, it was my fault. Uh, it was your fault, right? It was so my fault. Yeah. You were fucking up his car. No, or what? No, it was, no, it was he my. He fucked up his ride. I fucked up my car. It's a nice ride. Too. But but I I was just saying I did valet because uh, he did the parking job. But ah, it, now I got it. Okay, right, that's yeah. it. He parked it and he then you didn't it. got it out and of it properly. I, and, and then, then I was okay, pulling okay, out, okay, okay. and um, but it wasn't his fault. But yeah. he was just watching me. Dude, and he's like, he's like, it's the, the paint, man. You fucked it up. And I'm like, I know. I do. I hate the commentary Shit. when you make a mistake like that. Oh, yeah. Dude. I got yeah. into a car accident one time, and my friend was staring at me, and I just gave him the thumbs up, and he went, No, thumbs down. <laughs> yeah. I was like, No, I know it's thumbs down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to save face. It's so embarrassing when people see that. It's tough. No. Yeah. And what? How? Like, how did it end? Like, did you just drive away as it would have? Yeah, he been he, nothing or he looked at it and he's like, he's like, the paint's fucked up. I'm like, yeah, for sure. And I'm like, I'll see you later. And he's like, see ya. <laughs> Shit. Um, so it was really uh, overall, besides the damage, I'd say it was a positive experience. For sure, dude. You know, I had a solid connection with the valley guy. I think the world breaks us all and makes us stronger in the broken places. Oh, dude, it's beautiful. <laughs> so that's my beef. Dude, my beef of the week is with um, the lady at the pizza shop. I was in New York City for the last couple of days. We did a live podcast at Caroline's. It was so fun, you know, doing this in front of a lot of people who were really responding well to it and uh, just like a lot of love. And it, it was really just one of the best, best nights of my life. And I'm in New York and I'm with some buddies from high school and we're having a great night. We hit a bunch of bars. I'm ripping up the dance floor. I'm talking to people. I feel 10 feet tall and bulletproof. It's always in those moments, you never see it coming. But we went to a pizza shop to grab a slice at like three in the morning. And then a group of like five British girls walk in with two of their moms. They're probably in like their mid to late thirties and they're, they're really liquored up. And the most bold one just starts talking to us. And she's like, what the fuck are you boys up to? How's it going? And we're like, hey, what's up? And then Charlie's like, hey, are you from Australia? She's like, yeah, I'm from fucking Australia. She starts doing like a bad accent and we're like, oh, ha ha ha. We start laughing. She's like, no, and she just keeps talking shit, but it's charming. Or it's like on the fence of charming and not charming, but we can't quite place it, so we're just rolling with it. I walk away, sit down, wait for my pizza slice. She keeps talking to Strider. And then I hear Strider being like, no, no, don't say that, don't say that. And then I literally hear her being like, your mate's got pubes on his face. She's talking about me. Really? She's like, I'm like, hey, I heard you. Yeah. And she's like, oh, shut up. You pubes on your face, shut up. Everyone else in the pizza shop starts laughing. Really? So I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm like, okay. What is pubes on your face? Like the the ball hair she was saying my face looks like that oh okay yeah so it's mean and then she comes over and sits at our table and like i just try to be cool i try to ask her questions i'm like so where are you from what do you do like i'm like oh you're married like how'd your husband propose try to like connect my way out of her insulting me but then she just keeps going like will you shut up you have pubes on your face you have pubes all over your face and i'm like uh, okay like why are you doing this and then finally at a certain point i'm like you know what let's just go to the let's go to the diner because we're gonna get some ice cream i'm like 
it's all good. And then I, I go to leave with my pizza slice and then she grabs it and takes a bite. Oh. And I go, uh, all right, you can just keep it, I guess. Like not knowing what to do, because I, I didn't want to, I had this urge to like stand up for myself and in a couple moments I did, but it came out too hot and the guys I was with were like, easy dude. Mm -hmm. Like she was like, oh, you got like a YouTube page? What are you gonna do, film me? I was like, all right, I'll film you. Like thinking if I filmed her, she'd calm down. My friends were like, dude, put your camera away. And I was like, oh shit, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then so she took a bite of the pizza and I was like, you can just keep it. And then the two people next to her were like, oh, dude, you just punked that guy out of his pizza. And I was like, what are you, you guys are like enabling the bully. But then when I talked mm -hmm. to Strider about it later, he was like, no, everybody disliked what she was doing. They just didn't want to say anything. But that's not how I saw it at all. Mm -hmm. In my mind, when I was getting bullied, I saw everybody like loving it and loving that I was getting bullied. Like there was a moment earlier where I said something kind of cheeky back to her and another lady in the pizza shop like was like, what, what did you say? And like, who didn't even know her? Mm -hmm. And kind of jumped on her side. I was like, man, everyone here, hates me and then it really ruined my night after having like the best time ever i was just fucking bummed out i was like fuck man mm -hmm. and I, I realized what i should have did was and it's so hard to calibrate this stuff because like a week ago at that party i stood up for myself too much and it made things awkward is i should have just said hey it was really nice talking to you but i haven't seen my friends in a while we just want to enjoy our pizza have a good night mm -hmm. but it never even popped in my head that i should say that mm -hmm. i either thought i should like go at her and be like oh you think you're fucking funny or i should just take it yeah, mm -hmm. and and like just like you said with the animals, you just got to set a boundary. Yeah, and I just never set a boundary. Yeah. I let her walk all over. Yeah, and I just I just got I'm learning. You I'm could learning. you could also laugh. Wait, be like, <laughs> I do have pubes on my face. I tried, but yeah. I didn't. But I was oh, that like, didn't work. No, my laugh was so fake because my feelings were hurt. I was <laughs> oh, like, right. uh, uh, I do have pubes on my face. <laughs> 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 you start crying, <laughs> and I started cool. crying. Like I couldn't fake the fun. Yeah. Like I wanted to be like that. Strider was doing that. Like she yeah. would make a joke and Strider be like. <laughs> I like laughed genuinely. I was like, yeah. "It's a superpower, bro." Because all yeah. my my hurt was like, front of my face. Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Uh, so, Dean, do you have a beef of the week? I was thinking about it while you were uh, telling your beef of the week, but I can't remember any situation where I really kind of felt hurt or it's a weird situation. Not really. My man. I love that. That's great. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, Chad, who's your babe of the week? My babe of the week is uh, the Whole Foods Buffet. Uh, have you been to Whole Foods? Mm -hmm. you know, it's this uh, grocery store. They have a fire buffet. Uh, I love to get salads from there. Uh, sometimes I get salads with tuna. I like to go with the arugula base. Uh, I get tuna sometimes. Or sometimes they have like a, a beef stew option. So I'll pour in the beef stew and I'll get a salad on top of that. Basically what I'm trying to say is the Whole Foods Buffet is fire and they have excellent sele selections and they keep me healthy and um, I get all my nutrition from the Whole Foods Buffet. So I wanna give them a major shout out even though it's owned by big corporations, Big Biz, Amazon, what up? Not really, um, but I respect Amazon, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyways, just wanna give a shout out to that buffet. That's awesome, dude. My babe of the week is New York City. Oh, dude. I know I'm a SoCal boy, but for my money, I think it's the best city in the world. Even just wow. being there for a couple days, the bustling energy, the intensity of the streets, the way people are so no-nonsense. Like, they do not do phony politeness in New York. Like, I got into the cab on the way to the hotel. I was like, sir, how was your day? And he just looked at me like, what? <laughs> Don't ask me about my day. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, this is a new, a new breed out here. Yeah. I had a diner, I, or, I ordered, then I forgot I wanted something else. I'm like, hey, can I get something else? The look of disdain that the waiter gave me that I ordered twice and that I was ordering so much mm -hmm. crushed me, but I loved it. I was yeah. like, this is very real. Mm -hmm. You know, the service industry there, yeah. you gotta bring it. And then you feel that all throughout the city, all the things that people say about it are true. Was it the first time you were there? No, I've been there, but I just, every time I go back, I, I lived there for a while actually. Okay. But I was so young, I don't think I really noticed all these yeah, things. Yeah. I just took it for granted and then, this time I was really like, man, this is a special place. And like the way people go into bars there when it's cold, they don't want to leave. And everyone's having a better time there than they're having here. Mm -hmm. Like right, it's cool. really like people say it's a fun hell and that LA is a sad heaven. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's, I that's contend that to be true. All right. So cool. New York's and, and you know what? And the comedy there is amazing. David Tell. Oh, beast. The greatest. Yeah. And then being at Caroline's Comedy Club, the people there were so cool. Yeah. The they were awesome. was so awesome. Amazing yeah. energy. The best right. energy. energy. Right. Yeah. And they're just very straightforward. Yeah. Very important as well. Yeah. Dean, yeah. who's your babe of the week? Um, I think the, the entire week already. Nice. You know, that, that trip uh, to LA 
which is specifically, you know, to uh, place um, that wild, that global wildlife show, which we are busy with. And it just gives me an opportunity to take my mission to a whole different level again, you yeah. know, to, to make it bigger and stronger. And there is lots of, you know, uh, platforms um, which are listening to me and my mission and which want to work with me together. And um, I have lots of opportunities to inspire important people about my mission and to to sell that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is pretty inspiring, man. This is pretty cool. It, it takes it to a different level. I'm busy since four years with it now. And it's my ultimate passion. It's the reason what I believe what I've been put on this planet for as we spoke about it uh, before. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is super exciting for me. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah, congrats on everything. Thank yeah, you. well deserved. Um, Chad, who is your legend of the week? My legend of the week is my buddy Chase G. Um, he, uh, you know, because I knew we were doing this podcast, and I was like, which friend of mine resembles a lion the most? It's Chase. He's, All right, he's and got, why? He's, he's got, he's got the mane, um, and uh, that's pretty much it. That's nice. awesome. Yeah. The main. Yeah, he's got cool. the main. He, Dude, I just want to see this guy's hair right now. He's he's Portuguese, so he uh, he's like a Portuguese lion. He looks more like Mufasa. Does he has a beard? Um, no, he does. He has he has stubble. Okay. Uh, but it, I'm just talking about his flow. I mean, yeah. he looks more like Scar in terms of, you know, but a good Scar. Complexion. A good Scar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a benevolent yeah. Scar. Right. All right. Um, All right. So I want to give a shout out to Chase and yeah, Chase cool. and I. We we just uh, we went to college together. We studied abroad in Australia, which they have tons of crazy wildlife there yeah. too. Yeah. Um, we went to Stradbroke Island. They say they have like nine of the twelve most poisonous snakes there. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's bats everywhere. Have you been to Australia? No, not yet. There's bats everywhere, which wow. well, you don't see that here. Like we yeah. were in uh, um, Byron Bay, I believe that's what it's called. And literally at like you know at, at sunset, the sky was just covered in filled bats. with bats, <laughs> and you just see them flying. Crazy. It was like out of a movie. You're like, this right. is crazy. It's awesome. And, and we'd go out to bars and we'd look in the trees, and the trees would just be filled with bats. Crazy. Yeah, it was awesome. They'd just be flying around everywhere. Uh, yeah, I miss that. I, I sometimes amazing. have bats in my room. Oh, do you? Yeah. And oh, this yeah. is this is annoying, man. Yeah. When you have to get them out of it because uh, I have a thatch roof. Uh -huh. in um uh africa which means it's very high so yeah they like to to hang there you know and then yeah all of a sudden in the night you hear like not you know it's not a fly it's like you know when a bat flies like right <laughs> right yeah and then it's like oh man come on i don't feel like having a bat in my room now <laughs> you know? and then yeah. you get up in the middle of the night and you somehow grab that thing from the pool to clean the pool and you yeah to somehow catch it and then yeah, yeah it's yeah. pretty cool man like yeah adventure. that's awesome all right dude i'm gonna my legend of the week I'll be right back hold on hmm. I don't know what what's is. happening I don't know <laughs> does he has a dog no uh, I thought maybe he's gonna walk in with his dog <laughs> yeah Oh, oh wow! <laughs> it's my birthday today. Birthday, is it? Guys. No, yeah. seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, congratulations, bro. Oh, thank my dog you. doesn't hey, like wow. carbohydrates, but occasionally he loves oh, a McFlurry. Dude, thank you so much. Yeah, of wow, course, bro. Oh, I appreciate yeah. it. So let's wow. sing it to him. We got a couple yeah. people here. Very How's young. Go? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you, <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear Chad. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Woo! Thank you guys so much. Dude, thank you for this McFlurry. This of course, my dog. Cool, it's this. a little too cold right now. So, no, yeah, I'm let, let it, let it thaw. melt and then I will savor this. And thank you my so dog. much. My dog. Happy birthday. You oh, are my dude. legend of the week. Thank love you, man. You dearly, I love dude. you so cool, much, man. man. You're a beast. All right. Amazing, man. Do you have a legend of the week, Dean? Huh. A legend of the week. Who is my legend of the week? My legend of the week. Wow. Like, who impressed me this week? Dexter? Uh, well, this week started on Monday, right? Oh, right, right. So I was in the plane already. There has to be somebody out of this environment. Yeah, yeah. who's the coolest person you've met in LA so far? Hey, Andrew. He's very cool. He's a cool guy. What's up, Andrew? 
He's really cool. Shout out to him. He's I've really seen him do yeah, some cool like shit. Him. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think my legend of the week is Fanas. She's from uh, uh, Bunny Murray Productions, and uh, they she, made Real World. Yeah, exactly. And she has just such a great vibe. She has such a great energy, and she like both of them, uh, Fanas and uh, Julie. Uh, they just, you know, we, we started off with the pitches and uh, obviously I started, you know, explaining my whole mission and everything. They knew a lot about it already, but they never heard it out of, you know, how I explain my mission and my life and, you know, that whole way to where I'm now. And a day later, they started explaining it to the, you know, platforms in the same words. Like they really, you they could see it. they soak it in like a, like a sponge and they, they really... Like it was super impressive to hear how they really learned about my mission and how they cared about it. Because if you care about something and if you value it, you'll give it the same way further to the next person or to the next, you know. And it was just super inspiring to see how they have been inspired by who I am and what I'm doing. And that, that was impressive for me. So a huge shout out to them. They really feel it. It's not, you know, it's nothing fake in it. It's I like, know, I think mm. people misunderstand. They think salesmen, being a salesman is being like fake no, you, you have to believe in yeah, the product yeah, to make they, it work that's yeah. it and i could really see how they believe in it and how they believe in me and in what we want to create with one another and it was absolutely nothing about money or anything like that it was really they were feeling the mission and the the good cause behind it and everything and that motivated me very much nice that's yeah. awesome then we do a quote of the week chad what's your quote of the week my dog my quote of the week comes from uh the patriot Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger, um, they're around the campfire, and um, he's saying, uh, he's just talking to a soldier, and he's like, they call this the new world. It's not. It's the same as the old. But if we win, we'll be able to build a new world, a world where all men are, cre are created equal under God. And then later on in that scene, they talk about... <laughs> um, they capture like a, a, a wagon. It's General Cornwallis's wagon. Yeah. And they uh, they find some dogs and one of the guys is like, how about we uh, we uh, eat some of the dogs? And the, one of the guys is like, eating a dog? And Mel Gibson goes, oh yeah, dog is a fine meal. Very fine. A very fine yeah. meal. The way they shake their heads yes in him, because yeah. he's kind of like a scholar he's, he's guy. He's the preacher. Yeah. Yeah. He's not used to war life. <laughs> yeah, just... So yeah, it's a good movie. This is my quote. All right, my quote of the week is I I first heard it on Mark Maron's podcast, and it's a great one. It's from Ernest Becker from his book The Denial of Death. I think that's where it's from, and he basically talks about how all of man's problems come from our fear of death. Basically, I think that's the general premise. But I love this quote. It says, "People create the reality they need in order to discover themselves." So all those choices you're making, all those mistakes you think you're making, mm -hmm. you might have made them that's for deep. a reason. They might be leading you to something that you need to find out. So you can be your whole self, my dog. Super inspirational, man. Fire. Yeah, that's what's, I love that. What's your quote of the week? Huh. I think I, I've used that quote of uh, David Attenberg uh, already before as, as well. So, I loved it. Yeah. Um, how was it like? Once nature determined how we survive, nowadays we determine how nature survives. And that's pretty impressive. But I actually got another. Let me quickly check. It's a big that. responsibility. Yeah huge responsibility if you know for certain that the end of the world is coming are you gonna party more no you can party I'm gonna less. exactly do what i'm doing because i i love what i'm doing that's awesome that's an awesome answer oh that's good stuff so there was that that other quote which was super inspirational as well and i have it here it says what is it there we go cousin mcflurry Oh, is it good? Mm -hmm. You like awesome. M&M's more than Oreo, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. All right. It says, if you build an army of 100 lions and their leader is a dog, in any fight, the lions will die like a dog. But if you build an army of 100 dogs and their leader is a lion, all dogs will fight as a lion. I love That's that. That's super cool somehow. I believe it? that. Yeah. yeah. It's about what you feel. It's about yeah. Yeah, what you believe in, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're only as strong as what you believe in. Exactly. I believe in my squat and my deadlift. Wow, okay. <laughs> Chad, do you have a phrase of the week for getting after it? Um, let's form a pride. Wow. My phrase... So, oh, getting after is right. like... Uh, it's like 
a phrase for saying how let's party. Okay. A, a different way of saying it, like a way of saying let's party hard. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, it's like something you say to your crew to get them amped up before you hit the town. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, you got okay. everybody around you, you're all in a circle. Okay. They need to hear something motivational to bring that energy to wherever right. you're going. Yeah. Mine is from the movie Wayne's World, and it's when uh, Wayne is uh, first laid eyes on Cassandra, and he's, he's, he really just love at first sight. He really wants to talk to her. And they do that Spike Lee shot where he kind of like floats on a dolly towards her. He's just like totally lost in his like infatuation with her. And right when he gets to her, you're like, is he going to say something stupid? Is he going to come in too hot? And then he just says, you want to go somewhere and talk? <laughs> and she goes, sure. And it was that easy. And a lot of times, stokers will write and be like, I don't know what to say to this girl. It's like, well, sometimes the most straightforward thing and the least adorned thing is the, be is the best thing. So, you mm -hmm. yeah. so guys, let's go somewhere and talk. <laughs> cool. Well, what should I say? Let's be like a lion. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just be like a lion, you know, like lions are so in every aspect, so cool, mm -hmm. so amazing, super balanced between love and being a beast, having energy, being relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They just full of surprises. Yeah. You can feel like when I see in your videos, you can feel the power inside yeah. of them, but they're just playing around with you. Exactly. But just they be just like a lion. They just contain it inside. So you, they're just like, no. there's that harmony. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is the smartest person who ever lived? I like to ask that. Who ever lived? Mm -hmm. Steve Irvin. Dude. Yeah. Have you met his He kids? died while doing what he loves. That's the best way to go. Man. That's the best way to go, man. He did his entire life what he loved. He achieved a lot with it. And he died while doing it. Like, are you a fan of what his son is doing? I think yeah, his, his son, of course, is his, his entire son family. Yeah, yeah, they're the all. Podcast. I mean, there's thousand ways of doing what we all are doing. I mean, we all have the mission and the goal to, to create a better future for our planet's wildlife. And yeah. I think what they are doing is one great way to do it. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, super, super fan of it. Fuck yeah. Dean, thank you so much. Thank you for spending so much time. Too. Yeah, it's thank you late. guys for having You've me been here. here. It was super cool. Your fellas yeah. are tired. Thank you guys yeah, for thank coming. thank you for sticking you around. warriors. Emma, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, is there anything you want to plug? Like your, your Instagram is Dean Dot Schneider. Is that yeah, correct? exactly. Dean you guys have to check it out. It's yeah. fucking amazing. Dude. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Dean Dot Schneider. S C H N E I D E R. There you go. All right. And do we look forward to what you have coming up out of all the stuff that you're doing out here? I'm sure exactly, it's going to be yeah. Yeah. incredible. Yeah. And it's good stuff. And happy birthday, my dog. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go hug my girlfriend's dog again. <laughs> yeah, nice, dude. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for stopping in. Super uh, cool. Thanks yeah, for listening. Thanks, man. Thank you very much.